I'm Ellen Kunzik. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and the University of Ottawa. Hi, and I'm Gil Kaplan. I'm a gastroenterologist at the University of Calgary. Uh, today we're going to have a conversation about a, a study that Ellen led called Asthma is Associated with Subsequent Development Inflammatory Bowel Disease, a population-based case control study. Uh, this was published in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology. So Ellen, why did you do this study? So there is a lot of evidence to suggest that your interplay between your genetics, your microbiome, and your environmental exposures increase your risk of developing several immune-mediated diseases. Asthma and IBD are examples of two diseases that have become increasingly common over the last half century in the developed world and are becoming increasingly common in the developing world. So we wanted to look at the association between asthma and IBD. The aim of our study was to look at the association between asthma and the subsequent development of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So what methods did you apply to answer your question? We used health administrative data from the province of Alberta and we applied a validated algorithm to identify incident or new diagnoses of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So we had 2,377 cases of ulcerative colitis and 3,087 cases of Crohn's disease. And what we did was look at their date of diagnosis and then look backwards to see if they had a diagnosis of asthma prior to their diagnosis with IBD. And we wanted to compare the rate of asthma in these individuals to individuals without these diseases. And we compared cases and controls using logistic regression model. And we adjusted our regression model for potential confounders of the association between asthma and IBD. So we adjusted for sex. Uh, living in a major urban center such as Calgary Edmonton compared to living outside of these centers as well as neighborhood income quintile. We also use an indirect method to adjust for the potential of smoking as a confounder of the association between asthma and IBD. And we also looked for effect measure modification by age or to see if the impact of asthma on IBD was different across different ages at diagnosis. So what were your key findings? In cases of Crohn's disease we found that there was an association. So our odds ratio was 1.45 and it was significant and this finding was consistent across ages at diagnosis of Crohn's disease. However, when we looked at ulcerative colitis, we actually found that the impact was different depending on the age that you were diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. So if you were diagnosed at 16 years of age and under, there was a significant association. Similarly, if you were diagnosed after 40 years of age, there was a significant association. But in individuals diagnosed between 17 and 40, we actually didn't find a significant association in this age group. So Gil, as a gastroenterologist, what do these findings mean to you? Well, as a gastroenterologist, I find these findings fascinating. For hundreds of years, we've known that Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis have been associated with a number of chronic immune-mediated diseases like arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, uveitis, primus sclerosis, and cholangitis. And this data suggests that asthma may be a new immune-mediated disease that we need to add to this list. And as a gastroenterologist, there are some very important clinical relevant points as well. If you're a primary care doctor, an internist, a pulmonologist, and you're caring for somebody with asthma, and they start to develop chronic abdominal pain, diarrhea, bleeding, you may need to refer them to a gastroenterologist to rule out an underlying diagnosis of IBD. Similarly, as a gastroenterologist, we may need to change the way we triage these patients to ensure that we are ruling out um, IBD from these patients. Um, now, this was one of the interesting um, and fascinating puzzles of your, of your study was, why do we see a difference in the association by age of diagnosis? What do you think is the explanation for that. So that was a really intriguing finding and there's a lot of evidence coming out now that suggests that environmental risk factors for IBD are actually age specific. So some examples of environmental risk factors that have demonstrated age specific associations with IBD are whether or not you're living in a rural versus urban environment, appendicitis, air pollution, smoking status, and there's also evidence suggesting that genes like NOD2 are more common in individuals diagnosed at younger ages compared to people who are diagnosed later in life. We think that this may just be adding to the information that we have suggesting that the pathogenesis of IBD is different for younger individuals versus older individuals. And I think this is something we really need to explore further in using epidemiological studies as well as basic and translational work. Great. Thank you. Thank you.